Dan, we're live, I think. Hi, guys. Uh, Bob the Axeman Hill right here with Bob from ASG. God bless America for Double Bob Day. Double, Double Bob, Bob Day. Day. God bless America. All right, now, Bob, you have uh, conspicuously agreed to uh, be on our live show, much, uh, much to your regret, I assume, uh, to talk about some new products, namely the CZ805 Brent series, right? Exactly, exactly. And and I get my pets back after I'm done with the live show. Right? Yes, they are in the corner in that black box. Um, we have uh, we have cut some air holes in them. So, okay, uh, okay. Yeah. Last so. time you guys did it, you guys forgot the air holes in it. Well, I mean, we never figure someone's going to bring a Liger in. I mean, that's pretty rare, so, I mean, fair play. Uh, but that being said, if any of you guys have questions for Bob Lee from ASG or any questions about the CZ805 Brent series, please throw them in the comments section. I'll try to get to them as quickly as Bobly possible. Possible, wow. Um, Last wow. Double Bob Day was <laughs> No, we've, been, we've done well, it Well, we've more. had a couple Double Bob Days. We had a Triple Bob Day once. We had, that was, yeah, that exactly. was impressive. We had a Triple Bob Day. That was very impressive. Uh, now, that being said, um, if you guys are looking for the CZ805 brand, uh, we've got four different models on our website right now available for pre-order. Now, Bob, when did you say uh, that these were going to be estimated to be released into the market? We're, we're aiming for uh, before holiday season, mm -hmm. so you guys will be able to get it on your on your Christmas list, mm -hmm. or you know, afterwards with your Christmas money, you'll be able to get this in your hands. That's right. Now, if, if you guys want to lock one down and make sure you get one, again, get on that pre-order. Um, that being said, you know, this gun has been in a lot of different video games, so if you guys uh, liked using this in a certain video game, please let us know in the comment section which game that was. I'm actually curious. Uh, I feel like I've used this in Battlefield 4, however. Yeah, yeah it was in Battlefield yeah, 4. I remember. Sure. It took a surprisingly amount of kills to unlock 2, if I recall correctly. I still don't think I unlocked it yet. Yeah, it, take, it takes a little while if I can't remember correctly. But just, uh, just to go over the external features, uh, you guys... Uh, in, in case you guys don't already know, which you probably don't. Uh, the upper is a CNC machined aluminum. Um, now, the lower is a high-density polymer. Uh, this gun does feature a lot of ambidextrous or lefty-friendly features, like the fire selector, like the magazine release. And it does come with rails, a monolithic upper rail, rails on the left, right, and the bottom of the front of the gun. And you can actually remove the rails on the side of the gun uh, just to give it an extra sleek look if that's what you're looking for. Uh, there is such a thing as too much rail sometimes. Some people don't like don't like having too much rail estate. Mm -hmm. um, I personally, I like having the more rails the better. Yeah. But I like putting stupid crap on guns. So. Put just three lasers on it to get that predator effect. That's you what know, I always suggest. You know, I have done that on my shotgun. The thing is, I, like, I zero in the lasers at a certain range, but when I go, like, uh, further or shorter than that range, then the laser it gets awesome. It's, oh, yeah, it's real screwed up. So. See, that, that was all that I always, was, I always wondered was why didn't anyone just make, like, a complete laser unit with the Predator laser? Like, well, they, they have that in Battlefield 4. They have the tri-laser right, right. setup. I wish Someone I could would get do it one. in real life, you yeah, know? I mean, if, at least for novelty value, right? It, it's it's worth it. Hell, yeah. I would, I'd be uh, scared poopless if I saw a tri-laser coming around. Um... Okay, what's up, Zane Case? Good to see you here again. Um, I'm going to quiet that phone call. Um, CZ805 was in Call of Duty Ghosts. Thank you, Boy Scout. Much appreciated. Um, can you break down the CZ and show us the internals? Well, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not the best tech here. However, uh, Bob Lee can break down one part of it, which is to show you the quick change spring system. Would you mind showing us that? Yeah, we're pretty much taking the stock off. Yeah, exactly. which is super simple. Super simple. Do you this want me to take it off this? Uh, yeah, let's take it off. Just in case. All right. This one is new, so it's a little bit stiff, but uh, usually you just kind of there we go. Karate chop. Yep, karate chop. Get it started. Mm -hmm. Let it work its way down, and then back here. I don't know if, how visible that is on camera. Maybe you can. Oh, you can. It. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So you see that there's a flathead screw in there. So if you unscrew it. Underneath there will be um, a, a spring guide that you can just do the quarter turn like you do with the Evo and then it'll come out and you'll be able to uh, swap the spring, you know, and in the gun it'll come with a uh, M120 spring so you can switch it down to like an M100, M110 for whatever your field limit is. Uh, in terms of actually, you know, taking apart the gun, um, I'm with the other Bob in this case that I'm not very technically inclined either and if I were to take it apart, I wouldn't be able to put it back together. Uh, but you know, internally, you're going to be looking at a uh, mostly V3 gearbox. There's a few uh, other, you know, uniqueness to it, like the air nozzle, the trigger setup. But in general, all the standard V2, V3 parts will fit in there. Um, there's very few proprietary parts in there, like with our Evo. So if, you know, if that's one of the things you didn't like about our Evo, well, then the Bren is uh, going to be a much nicer option. Yeah, that is nice, especially, I, mean, I like that stock setup. <clears throat> First of all is that it's side folding. So if you want to cut down the weight quickly, you can do that in mediamente. Or if you want to cut it down even more and turn it into essentially a pistol-style rifle, um, you can do that by taking the stock off. Yep. Um, 
And also, uh, for those of you guys that either haven't wondered yet, are wondering, or I'm just going to tell you, um, the actual cheek rest on that, you can flip it around in case you're left-handed, so you can have the cheek rest going either way. It's five-position stock. Pretty darn awesome. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, now, are there any different colors for this gun, or is this it? That's from Benjamin Amaya. <clears throat> There are actually four different models of this gun. This is the standard length, and there's a CQB length in this color. Uh, and there's also also a tan version in the standard length and the CQB length barrel. So you have two options for color, uh, four options total for length and color. Yep, yep. And then on the tan version, it's going to be similar to this, where except instead of any part that's gray, it's going to be in tan. So both the, the brand in tan and also in the gray are going to be two-tone. Nice, nice. Um, now, uh, there's a couple other guns from your lineup that I'm a big fan of. In, in fact, before we get to those, I might as well just show you guys the tan gun right here. So here's the tan version of the brand and the CQB length barrel setup. Mm -hmm. uh, so there you go. Pretty good looking. Uh, I actually like the uh, the slightly different coloration from the upper to the mm -hmm. lower. That's pretty nice. Yep. So on this one, just to clarify, this one is a, uh, a pre-production sample. Mm -hmm. So it's all one color, whereas on the production version in the U.S., you're going to have the black lower instead of the uh, the tan lower. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a black stock instead of the tan stock. Nice. But so the upper is going to be you know, that color that you see. Give that two-tone look. I like yep. that. All <laughs> right. Now, we are already getting the uh, age-old question of how much is this going to be? All right. So this gun is going to be $350 map at your authorized ASG retailer, like Airsoft GI. That's us. Yeah. That's them. Yeah. And uh, this gun is going to come with a one-year warranty. And, you know, right there in that it's a pro-line gun really high quality internals you've got the cnc machine aluminum upper and i think at 350 bucks it's just the right price for this it's affordable but it's something different from your usual m4 but it still takes that m4 mag nice uh now bob can you give us a quick dab Nice, well played. I try to do it discreetly, but yours is way better. Um, now, for any, uh, actually, for any GI staff that's watching, Bill, um, Josh, or even John Curry, uh, if you can go over and grab the, the scale real quick from Kevin's desk, I appreciate that. We actually got a couple questions on getting the weight. So if you guys are watching, please go over and grab that and bring it to us. Anyway, that being said, um, I actually want to highlight another uh, ASG product that I've been uh, completely wowed by. Um, you know, I, I honestly haven't had the opportunity to use many products from action sport games. Mm -hmm. However, when I got my hands on the Scorpion Evo and wanted to play with it, um, I mean, not to take the shadow off right. this, but that gun in such a compact package, if you guys haven't checked it out, check out the Scorpion Evo as well. Um, that gun shoots so damn far for being in a CQB package. It's stunning. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. saw your uh, footage at the Therapist game, and, and I remember you saying that it was, uh, in, your, in your words, was, it gets a stupid amount of range yeah. from such a tiny gun. Yeah, it is literally a stupid amount of range. I had like a guy standing next to me who's like, damn, are you hitting things that far away? I was like, well, I'm not hitting them because my aim is crap, but but yeah, God. Yeah, at least you scared him a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I did. Down. I did. And the one thing I'm really happy about is you guys finally came out with a high capacity magazine for that mm -hmm. gun. I think it was definitely necessary, and I'm glad it's finally out there. So um, if you guys aren't, you know, if you aren't as interested in this, but you're interested in getting another soft gun for your inventory, I highly suggest checking out um, the ASG Scorpion Evo. Hey, Bill. Well done. You want to you wanna hold it for us? Yep. Uh, there okay, you go. Use, use those muscles, Bill. Where, right. do, we, where do we want to hook it? It's on Let's kilograms. It. This is America. We don't use kilograms. Why can't I set it to pounds? To libs. Libs. Come, sorry. How do you set it to pounds? Maybe hit that button set. Yeah. Uh, real quick to answer Raptor Airsoft's question. Inner barrel yeah. length. So on the so A1 good. model, it's going to be 363, so like a standard M4. And then on the A2, I believe it is 310-ish, something, something in that range. Let go again. There we go. So we're looking at... I can't see it. I'm looking right now. 6.70. 6.70 pounds. All right. Nice. Well played, Bill. Mm -hmm. Good on you for watching. Thank yep. you, Bill. I mm -hmm. listened to it and I moderated. Well done. All right. So 6.7 pounds. Nope, that's in there. All right. Good. Yeah, that's good. Is that Tim? No, that was Bill. <laughs> oh, you mean Bob. No, this is Bob. This is Double Bob Day, as you can guys see. Tim looks a little bit different. A little bit, yeah, a lot of it. Just, just a little yeah, bit. Just, 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 I mean, confusion. Uh, oh, hello. Did someone say Bryn? Hi, Bob. What's up, Rad Plastic? Good to see you here. Um, uh, someone's asking um, us to do a custom gun for uh, for the CZ805 Bryn, which I have no doubt our tech department will probably oh, yeah. get uh, heartily to work to real quick. Actually, there's one other feature uh, that's uh, another lefty friendly feature. If you guys actually want to move the charging handle from the left side to the right side, you can do that, which mm -hmm. is nice. 
Yeah, so the charging handle, to, to change the charging handle, it's a little bit more work intensive. You do actually have to partially disassemble the gun because it's held in place by a screw, but someone has to pull the charging handle back. Yes, so it's, it's a partial pull. It's a partial pull, but it will expose the hop up on this side. And it's got that nice uh, rotary style hop up that people like. I don't know if the contrast is showing on the screen, but it's it's the kind that is. Um, you probably bend it back a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Nah, you're not gonna no. see it. No. But it, it's a kind where it's a drum and it's rotating, you know, parallel to the barrel. It's not the perpendicular one where you're turning the dial this way. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, rotary style, style hop ups are uh, definitely in vogue right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and for those of you that can't see this, every time. Every time Bob is holding the gun, I'm getting just a full-on view of his awful, awful thumbnail right now. It is absolutely just I'm, awful. I'm, I'm too clumsy around real guns sometimes. Yeah, what, what did you say the, the, the bolt like landed on your thumb? Yeah, I was trying to unjam a, uh, a 930, and it decided to unjam itself the moment I had my, my thumb in there and just... But I have, a, I have a new nail growing out from That's underneath the old nail. Delicious. Um, now, out of curiosity, that hurt a hurt a little bit oh yeah it was it was my my right thumb was about twice the size of my left thumb for a good two and a half weeks oh oh pass pass on that one um uh, <laughs> uh it's funny some folks uh in the chat are wondering how we're responding by keyboard while i'm here talking to you guys yes mantha bill is moderating uh the chat i believe as well as possibly josh uh, i believe uh our other marketing intern carl is busy um bob also has telepathic powers oh yes i speak can about very enhance often. enhance um so another really cool product from uh, asg is obviously the po9 mm -hmm. yes. now that is a pistol that hit the market and made huge waves for, yeah, for yeah, a lot of folks definitely. that was kind of almost our our welcome party to the u.s mm -hmm. with uh that that pistol you know affordable but everyone needs a sidearm and mm -hmm. for the performance it's uh, it's been great for us yeah if you guys uh, if any of you in the chat have a po9 let us know in the chat we'd be curious to hear uh, it's just every single one of my friends uh, has been, been going out using them they swear by them josh loves his uh i mean i conspicuously don't have one bob i'm just saying uh, but currently, uh, they ship with, was it uh, CO2 mags? Yes, it depends on the version. Mm -hmm. So we have four different versions. Mm -hmm. We have uh, one version that will ship with a uh, green gas magazine and a hard case. Mm -hmm. And then we have two versions that will ship with a threaded barrel and a CO2 mag. And then those are um, the, the tactical versions, you can call them. One of them is black, one of them is two-tone. And then we have a Sportline version that's under $100, and it's great for someone looking for an affordable uh a pistol and then that one is uh has a polymer slide but it can run on green gas and it's really snappy with how light the slide is mm. that boy scout says i've never tried a czp09 well i would highly suggest it the grip is textured rather right box which is really nice uh functions well especially with the uh the co2 mag it functions well in colder mm -hmm. weather than yep. you normally expect uh with the co2 mag it's got exceptional uh kickback i think it's really awesome yeah. um yeah an all-around great gun <laughs> Uh, someone saying Tokyo Marui High Kappas rule. A lot of my friends like High Kappas, but those same friends also have CZPO 9s which is kind of funny. Um, I don't know, they always bring out the High Kappas when we play just pistols, but when we're playing regular, like, recreational or milsim, mm. they all have CZPO 9s hmm. So it's kind of funny. Except for I, Matt. Yeah, I won't, I mean, I won't disagree that the High Kappa mm -hmm. is, a, is a very nice gun. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like, uh, it's a good analogy. It, it, it's it's the, the M4 of pistols in the airsoft world. Everyone has accessories for them, and, and everyone, uh, you know, can, can customize it the way they like. But, you know, with our PO9, it's uh, definitely more things out of the box that are, I guess, skirmish ready and less work you have to do. And, mm -hmm. and for someone who doesn't want to tinker that much, it's a good option. Yeah, it's I always like having guns that are great out of the box. Uh, I mean, someone was asking, uh, what pistol is this again? Well, we're talking about the CZ PO9, but since we're on the topic of pistols, you can actually make this guy into a pistol by just taking off the stock real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yeah. take. The, you can definitely yeah. do that. What's it? So pressing the button. Pressing the then button. Just, yeah. And then. And then up, up, upwards. Oh, yep. upwards. Yes. So the there you go. Oh, I see. Yep. So press it in. So press it in. Yep. Karate chop. Yeah. There we go. And Six. we now have a pistol. Yes. That's crazy. It makes more sense on the shorter one, obviously, but mm -hmm. you know, on this one, it could still work. And then, if you were to do some kind of drum mag into it, it might be a little CQB too. That would actually be a lot of fun. I would. I, I, Josh and I were talking earlier. We definitely like the the CQB model, and you know, just it's nice to have a shorter barrel. Mm -hmm. But that's that's our own personal preference. Uh, <laughs> only weapon I need is Jesus. Well, that's that's something to go off of. Um, <clears throat> all right, just breaks the stock off. I got it off, guys. I got it off. Um, so pretty cool gun, and that's. That's, I think, one of my favorite things about action sport games as a company is that you guys don't have, like, a crazy amount of products, 
but the ones you guys do have are really fun and function really well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, we definitely do. We, you can argue that we take a little bit of a time on, on some of these, but mm -hmm. you know, we definitely try to incorporate as much products or as much features as we can into our products, especially for high profile releases like this. I mean, we, we put a lot of detail in it. One of the things that we were talking about earlier before the live show was that it actually, you know, right here, that this whole gas piston system actually comes out. I'm not going to do it on the live show because it, it took a little bit of time to get back in. But and it actually pistons. Yes, it actually pistons. That's a new verb I invented. Yeah. It actually pistons. But, uh, you know, we actually, there's a feature where you can actually change the gas block setting from uh, suppressed to unsuppressed. And, you know, these are all little things that, you know, we could have molded in one piece, definitely, if mm -hmm. we wanted to do that. But, you know, we, we want that realism there. Yeah, it's kind of cool. And for folks who'd be using this for, like, let's say, a, a replica for movies or mm -hmm. TV shows, that added feature will probably be helpful yep. in the long run. Yep. So that's pretty cool. Um, also, like, I think, you know, with the, the actual color, the two-tone color you got going on here, it gives it uh, either maybe not a more aggressive look, but a more stylish look. Yeah, so. it definitely stands out. Definitely stands uh, out. And for those of you that are wondering... Um, uh, this gun is actually in use by several different militaries and governments. Like before we got on the show, we're talking about, I believe it's Egypt and Mexico. Mm -hmm. Egypt, set up. Mexico, and the Czech Republic. The Correct. Czech Republic. Well, yes, the, this is the standard issue assault rifle for the Czech Armed Forces, mm -hmm. uh, which previously, unbeknownst to me, was the SAVZ 58. The VZ 58, yeah. right? The, the AK lookalike gun. It, it's a weird lookalike. I mean, that is pretty odd. Uh, the Milsom Ghosts. Uh, dab, Bob, dab, please. I dabbed earlier. You have to scroll back to see. Bob dabbed earlier. I dabbed as well. earlier. As well. Wow, he could have been asking for either Bob. <laughs> Bob's dad. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Ready? One, One two, two, three. All right. There we go. There we go. We've we reached our dab quota. Yeah, that's right. our dab quota. That's going to be it. Uh, what pistol do you recommend for speed soft? Interesting question. Uh, we were actually just talking about the CZ P09 mm -hmm. earlier. Um, I'd personally recommend that um, for just about any softing in general. Um, I, I honestly haven't had the chance to use one a lot, but I'm just going on, you know, the rave reviews of my friends. Um, that's what I would suggest. I mean, there's any number of other pistols if you're on a budget like KJWs. Um, I use the, just from guns I own, the KWA HK45. You guys recently came out with the, was it the SP-01 Shadow? Correct, the Shadow. Yeah. Yep, that's yeah. definitely. That one is more of a, the P, if you can call the P09 is a duty weapon, you know, mm -hmm. more tactical gun. The Shadow is uh, purely based for competition. It's It's mm -hmm. got all the features. We actually released a bunch of parts for them, including a uh, single action, you know, low, uh, short reset triggers, a, a plate that lets you mount a red dot. So that one is the one that you want to accessorize, whereas the P09 is the one that you get out of the box and you're just going to run stock. Thank you, Slip Mad. That was a very nice uh, comment and hilarious. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, how much does it cost? I'm not sure if you're referring to the PO9 or the SP01, so why don't you say both? Okay, so in the PO9, uh, it'll range between 85 and 120, and then the SP01 is going to be a little bit more. It's going to be around the uh, the 140 mark because it's all all metal. And then if you were asking about the brand, they're all going to be 350. So just regardless of length and also uh, color, it's all going to be 350. Rad Plastic is saying the PO9 is the jams. I thought he was going to say the PO9 jams, but he said is the jams, which is a good thing. PO9 is the jams. I have the green gas one. It's on part of the KWA HK45. Those are my two most used pistols. I appreciate that uh, that vote of confidence there. Indeed. Um, for uh, This is a question we get on live shows a lot, um, and usually it is, why can't I get an airsoft Glock? Someone's saying, for Glocks, why is there only Timberwolves? Um, now, I'm sure Bob can back me up on this. But that's because uh, well, Glock is not given the rights to uh, make an airsoft pistol legally. Um, at least for the civilian market, at from least, what I understand. Yeah. It, for law enforcement, you can get it, but not for not for reg regular uh, average Joe citizen. Yes. As of this last SHOT Show, um, we were made aware that Glock had finally given, a, uh, given the authority to make one, like Bob said, for military and law enforcement sales only. That means as an average airsoft, you cannot buy legally an airsoft Glock. So, yeah, there's pretty much only Timberwolves and the ATP series, which two new models just came out. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Can you short stroke the CZP09? Yeah, you can short stroke it. I think uh, our tech, one of our techs who enjoys tinkering, he's taken quite a few of them and done various mods to it. So, yeah. You should answer real questions about the gun, terrible streamers. Well, you got any real questions about the gun? Tell us right now. 
Um, can you LMG this gun on screen? I don't know what he means by LMG this gun. I think he means he wants us to put a drum mag in it. Oh, gosh, I wish we had a drum mag available. Have a drum mag. Yeah. Well, in lieu of a drum mag, I'm just going to bring another another uh, Bren on here. So <laughs> I'm just going to hold this right here. Now, one of the things that I personally like about this is, you know, obviously it's good out of the box. It's shooting uh, just under 390. Um, is the fact that you do have a quick change spring mm -hmm. system in there. This it makes this gun not only can you you know cut down the overall length of it, but you can cut down the overall FPS yep. as long as you have a lower spring. So if you guys are looking for a new gun to add to your inventory that you can take, you know, outdoor uh, or indoor, basically vary your FPS limits. Get this gun, get a lighter spring, and you can pretty much play wherever you want. Yep. So pretty and, awesome. And one of my favorite things about the fact that it's it's a true quick change spring feature. You know, you do have some guns that are advertised as quick change, but you have to take apart half the gun anyway takes, to access the back yeah. of the gear. But this one, as you saw, it, you just remove the stock, and then the, the back of the gearbox is right there, mm -hmm. and that you just unscrew it, put in the put in the new spring, redu uh, replace the spring guide. And, uh, and you're all good to go. And that's actually where the battery goes too, is by removing the stock, the battery goes on top of the receiver, a very much like the Evo. Oh, hey, Bill brought us a Oh, nice. Thank you very much, Bill. Good timing. Pretty sure Ooh. this was one of the perks that you can get in, uh, in, nice. in Battlefield, right? Wow. Put an extended mag on it. I kinda wanna see how it looks without on a short barrel. All right. Because we're talking about this oh, earlier. I'll, I'll, I'll see this. this yeah, yeah. Bill Bill this might it. look a little slightly ridiculous with yeah. the short barrel and no stock. There we go. Oh, this one is not. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Oh, okay. Found in Kevin's office. So yeah, we're talking about like maybe using this in CQB, and this is crazy awesome. Yeah, I mean maybe just a vertical grip, oh, and yeah. then yeah, you're gonna go to town with this thing. Look at that. Like an angled vertical grip. Gosh. Yeah, it's slightly ridiculous. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Or you get like one of those LMG carrying handles at the top and you, oh, don't, even, yeah. you don't even just aim, like, you just fire just from like the that. hip. Yeah. And maybe like three or four flashlights. There you go. Yeah. yeah, Wow, that is dope. Well played, well played. There we go. Where'd you find that drum man? Kevin's office in his bin of magazines. Oh, bin of, the bin of magazines. Yeah, the magazine. for pictures. Uh, can we get an airsoft high point? No, no we cannot. Do not get high point in on the airsoft game, please. Unless they make like... Cheapest gas pullback pistol out there. I was actually in um, at a uh, it's called Second Amendment Sports. It's in Bakersfield, California, my hometown. And I was looking around at all these guns, and I saw like a stupid low price. I was like, "What is that? Better? Uh, it's a high point, yeah. Like everything else is like three or four hundred bucks, and this is like one fifty. They, they make high points so with the really really flashy uh, Benjamin Franklin the hundred dollar bill Hydra dip pattern though. Oh my god. I wonder what market that's catered towards. Um, well, that's something. That's something. Uh, I, I don't know. It's just easy to make fun of high points. So, oh, well, they're they're good little guns. I mean, for 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 uh, for all that said, they're they're they they do go bang every time. That's true. I mean, you pull the trigger, and generally, it will fire a bullet. And mm. you know, the price is really low. Yeah, I just wouldn't be caught dead with one personally. What, what there there is that that running joke. You you load in. Uh, you insert a fully loaded magazine and it doubles the doubles value, the value of, of the gun. Yeah, that's funny. Um, ooh, this is interesting. What are your thoughts on making the Evo a DMR? Uh, right now, I would say that the Evo in and of itself is, you know, already very rangy. So that, that's kind of one of the interesting about Airsoft, just to rewind a little bit. You know, with Airsoft, it's really not about barrel length as much as the quality of your barrel mm -hmm. and hop up and the consistency compression of the compression the and the evil out of the box is everything's kind of optimized to work together within that system so that's why out of the box you know you're getting that crazy ring yeah, yeah. but uh in terms of external looks um you know, we are aware that that CZ has that long carbine, the Evo carbine out, and that's, that's really cool. cool. That'd be pretty yeah. cool. I agree. That would be pretty cool. You guys, you guys gonna make one? Yeah. No guarantees. You know, we'll, we'll we'll see what the market Gosh. feedback is first. We have to we have to see. We we gotta we gotta get this one out to our uh, customers first. Fair the, point. the Bren is a uh, Bren is priority number one right now. This is really cool. I'm not gonna lie. I'm actually kind of sold on this one right here. This looks pretty deadly. So that's awesome. Uh, hopefully we'll get a sample one to take out and go market with. Mm -hmm. Maybe, Bob. Yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, no, these are fun guns. And again, if you guys know you want one, make sure to get on the pre-order. It's already live on our website. Mm -hmm. So pre-order right now so you can be guaranteed to get one when it hits the market. Because yep. uh, sometimes with some of these guns, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, the gun will come out, there's limited supply, it gets sold out. 
and then there's no telling when we can do another batch because or not we can do another batch but the manufacturer will and bob backed me up on this is that sometimes you know uh guns are made they'll do big batches of them and then they won't do another run for a couple of years or they just won't correct right yeah. I mean, they're, they're depending on your relationship with the factory obviously mm -hmm. there is um different windows so yes. we, we definitely try to mitigate that but pre-order is the way to go you know if, you, if you're sure you want this gun pre-order right now and, and then you'll get it uh when it when it shows up and you know that gi will be one of the first stores to stock this that's that's no question see um do, 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 do. let's see uh, how cool are you guys out of 10? We, we go up to 11. Eight. I'm going to go with a 8 for myself, maybe an 8.5 for Bob. Um, let's see. If it got sold out, would you eventually restock? That's from Chocolate Cake 197. That actually goes to just what we just said, which is basically, you know, there's no telling. Like, if, you know, if it sells out and we can restock, we will. But, you know, sometimes there's a limited market for certain guns, not for this one. But um, as Bob said and as I said... You know, sometimes when they sell out, there's no telling when the, the factory is going to do another run of the gun. So if you know you want it, get on the pre-order or get it as soon as you can. Um, Airsoft PP2000 would be legit. Um, you know the PP2000? It's that uh, that Russian SMG. So machine gun, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, That'd be fun. I'm curious how big a market there is for that. Because, I mean, actually, Bob, now, a lot of the games I've seen you at, you've been mostly playing you know, just kind of regular airsoft play. Mm. You don't really mill some as much, right? I, it depends on the game, but yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I try, when, when I can get out, you know, now mm -hmm. it's more pickup games. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, what, what's the last game you actually went to? Last game I actually went to, I think I might have to go back all the way last year when when I played at a, uh, at Pendleton, that, that one game, that yeah. Lion Claws game in Pendleton. Oh, I didn't know you were there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That was a fun game. Uh, that's actually coming up kind of soon in uh, early October. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to try to make that I, I think so. I'm going to oh, try to okay. make that All one. Right. I mean, they actually had the doors that you could uh, you could kick down, you know, that they encourage you to kick 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 down doors. and, and uh, Really? Oh, there, there was a, there was one uh, hilarious instance where... I remember the doors can be locked from the inside in the outside. Mm -hmm. So you had two guys, one on the inside, one on the outside, and they were exchanging fire through what little cubby hole there is, trying to pull the latch back, <laughs> close it, pull the latch back, close it, and, and it was like something out of uh, something out of like a like an old cartoon. It's like Hot Shots Part Two yeah, or something. Exactly. Yeah. Um, let's see here. All right. So trust trying to just trying to go out to the questions. See if there's anything we can answer. Um, oh, Bob Square, what do you think of building a dead space loaded? I have the engineer suit built. That would be impressive. I think, well, that'd be tough, actually, because one, the suit's difficult, and then all of the guns would likewise be difficult. You ever heard of dead space? I have. It's that it's that space uh, survival horror mm -hmm. game, right? That's right. Yeah. I feel like we kind of missed the boat on that, because they had dead space 1, 2, and 3, and yeah, no airsoft loadouts mm -hmm. from that. So uh, Now, Bob and I actually share... Uh, a favorite pastime that we uh, we kind of play every now and again. Uh, but I'm cur kind of curious to see if there are any of you players in the comments that play Heroes of the Storm. Uh, because as a free game we have gotten on to. Uh, so when we're not airsofting or dealing with our BB Gats, uh, we are playing uh, Heroes of the Storm. Mm -hmm. And I, I only play one character and one character alone. So, which is Sergeant Hammer. Um, but that being said, uh, that being said, uh, is ASG have any... Uh, I guess, have any plans uh, to go out to any big events or sponsor any games in the near future? It's always a possibility. Right mm -hmm. now, I would say there's no, no, nothing in the works or nothing scheduled, but it's always a possibility. Mm. Well, that would be fancy. It'd be good to see you on more events, Bob. I mean, you're always making the rounds around here, which is really great. And it's always good to have a double Bob day, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, before we end the show, we are going to be uh, tapping out of here in probably like about 10, 12 minutes. So throw them in the comments below and we'll try to get to them. Uh, that being said, Bob, have you seen any movies recently? Uh, the last movie I saw in theaters was Independence Day Resurgence. I regretted that. Yeah, I mean, I had a fun time just because I knew it was going to be a kind of meh movie. Yeah. But yeah, money spent on that was a bit rough. No, no, I'm, I'm hoping though that uh, my next two movies aren't going to let me down. It's going to be a Magnificent Seven mm -hmm. and uh, Doctor Strange. You know, Magnificent Seven makes me want to get back into using a revolver because I've used revolvers mm -hmm. in airsoft every now and again, and it's pretty fun. Uh, but it's just that six-round limit is a bit tough. That's true. You know, you have to be a really good shot. Yeah, and well, using speed reloaders in airsoft—I mean, essentially like uh, 
uh, the speed clips, like it, it's kind of tough in there, mm -hmm. like it's not as fast, it's not as fast as you would think, and especially uh, in the middle of like a CQB, you know, firefight, that can be downright just difficult. Um, have you ever used, I mean, I know you guys, uh, you have your uh, revolvers that you guys sell. Have mm -hmm. you ever used those in an airsoft game? I have not actually used those in a game. Mm -hmm. I would like to try to do a game where, you know, it's just a cowboy theme, where it's mm -hmm. nothing but revolvers and, like, bolt-action rifles, maybe, something like that. That'd or be like a, like a lever action yeah, or something. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, just to even the playing field a little bit. But uh, I actually haven't used it in a game. I'd like to, but I just feel like you'd be at a bit of a disadvantage otherwise. I think you're right. However, I mean, getting a revolver kill is more of like I always like adding new challenges to my airsoft mm -hmm. gameplay. Like you know, on uh, like a regular night of gameplay, I'll go with a shotgun just to test myself. So on a regular night, you know, go out with a revolver or maybe even two or three revolvers from ASG. Uh, well, I mean, uh, get, just pulling another revolver is easier, easier than reloading. Yeah, that's true. So especially with airsoft revolvers, you, know, you want to save the shells. You can't just let them oh, hit yeah. the ground and yeah. just run with them. Yeah, I mean, you buy more. They're not like stupid expensive, but you know, it's a cost. Yeah. Um, actually, actually, speaking of revolvers, that's mm -hmm. one thing that, that we didn't talk about earlier mm -hmm. um, and that actually I'm authorized to reveal now is that uh, our Dan Wesson 715, which is, you know, the first revolver that's full metal CO2 powered with adjustable hop up. That's what I was going to say. And field legal. Uh, we had the original six inch version. And one of the questions we had was, hey, you know, what are you guys releasing any other lengths? And we actually are. We are going to be releasing soon a two and a half inch version, like a little snub nose, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna be doing a four inch version that has an integrated rail at the bottom. Really? Yep, so you can put, you know, whatever accessories you have on there. And uh, that one, that one is pretty close. We'll have uh, info out for that, but that, that should be fun. You know, it's, it's definitely maybe more practical of a sidearm than the six inch version, which is a little unwieldy. Well, that's nice. You guys are coming out of different types. Uh, I'm actually really excited for the four-inch version. That sounds really fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. With the especially the rail. You know, I think that's it's almost like even though it's a revolver, like people still want to attach stuff mm -hmm. to it. So the, the rail will definitely help when it's in the frame. I feel like I have seen some fun revolver attachments. Like I've seen vertical grips. I've seen obscenely large flashlights. Mm -hmm. I've seen grenade launchers. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can attach and have a lot of fun. Just do a do a really long uh, rubber knife just in case <laughs> for uh, for a knife kill. Hey, I'm not, I'll, I'll be honest, at some of our zombie games, the folks that bring out the longest bladed weapons are usually the ones that survive, well, the longest. You keep your distance, right? You yeah, know. the six-foot-long spears. I got actually taken out by one, uh, uh, well, I can go into the story later, but it, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, that being said, uh, I actually just had an idea for a Wild West game using your revolvers. I'm kind of curious to hear your thoughts on it. Let's say everyone had a revolver, mm -hmm. and you guys also sell the holsters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what if... You could only take the gun out of the holster when you saw somebody, but as soon as like like people disappeared, you have to put it back in the holster. Okay, so like a quick draw. It yeah, exactly. Your... Yeah, it kind of incentivizes you to be better at drawing your pistol mm -hmm. quick. Test your mechanics. Yeah, yeah, that'd be that'd be interesting. You know, that just a, another twist to uh, to the gameplay. Well, I feel like the first shot after you pull out the holster, if if you're trying to do it quick, it's just good. that's going to be the one that's going to be completely. It's going like... to be a, it's going to feel it's going to be a flyer. Yeah, 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 pretty much. So, I don't know. Let me know if you guys uh, are interested in having uh, Bob Lee come back on, bring out some pistols, maybe doing some Hunger Games or some Wild West themed games. Yeah, we right. would have to have good hats. We would have to have good hats. I've got one. I've actually got an old Yosemite Sam hat that's well, giant. Well, either we have good hats or everyone wears like their usual fast helmet and stuff. And mm -hmm. then we just buy the little party the tiny hats, hats that yeah. goes on top. You okay. Velcro it and that's a new accessory. So it's either or. It's either the fast helmet with a tiny hat or just giant. Yeah, hat. just giant. Okay, hats. we're going to stick to that. Uh, okay. Um, well, this is interesting. Do you think there's a chance of a good CO2 powered or AEG MP9 or MP7? Um, I actually think there already is an AEG MP7 out there. Yeah, the TM. Yeah, the, the Tokyo Rui one, yeah. Uh, as for a CO2, I don't know. I haven't heard anything uh, on my end. Um, high ground airsoft, guys. I have yet to go there. Uh, a lot of my friends went there and said it's a lot of fun. So check it out. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, that's not a question. I bet the Bobs won't slow motion 80s high five. Well, you bet it wrong. Doing the. See. <laughs> All right, and we did it. You guys got it. All right. Okay. Um, now, Bob, uh, you've been playing airsoft for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. How long? 2003. Yeah. Uh, that'd be exactly 19 years. Okay, so that being said, uh, no, the math is 13. wrong. Yeah, 13. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Um, what, 
I mean, what is a gun that you've like you've always wanted for airsoft? You kind of wish existed in airsoft. Hmm. Like, it could be sci-fi, it could be movie, it could be a gun on the drawing board that never made it to production, like the XM8. But if you wanted that, I'd judge you. Right. Um, so I'm just kind of curious. I, I haven't gotten that question, but I, I'm, I'm kind of curious what, to hear Gosh, what to hear your thoughts. Gun would I be interested in? Well, you know, actually, there was a gun that I was interested in, but it, it's already it's, it was produced, and this was actually been produced for a while now it's the uh, the real sword the the, the type uh, 97 or the the qbz 95 the the uh chinese army uh assault rifle oh well uh, shoot what is the name again i'm blanking on it the uh the type 97 type 97 yeah. yes yeah. now it's funny because like i didn't i wasn't really at all familiar with the gun mm -hmm. until i saw battlefield 3 yeah, yeah which had you know the chinese, the chinese PLA. Faction, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah uh it's very interesting gun um have you i haven't heard much about it like does it jam does it well, I mean, it looks like he uses Stanag mags. Right, right, yeah. It's it's one of those things where, I guess, like you can get it in Canada as as a real gun, but you can't get it in the U.S. because of import laws. I'd love to own one, but I, I get, but it seems to be fairly reliable. The Canadians really the Canadians like it, like as a you know the the civilian shooter crowd. Wow. Well, I mean, you can also get a mortar in Canada, but you can't get like a thirty eight special snub nose. So you should ask Robo what you can get. Yes, Robo, please bring us down <laughs> things. Like like ketchup flavored Lay's chips, oh, and yeah. and your milk in bags. Yeah, that I I did not expect to see milk in bags in Canada. I mean, I saw a lot of like liquids in bags in the Philippines, but definitely not in Canada. And then they showed us this little jug that's specifically for the milk in bags, which was I still don't get that. Like, why not? I just don't understand. Yeah. Oh well. Well, cheers to you, Robo, if you have been yeah. watching this. Um, if uh, I had a girlfriend, I'd leave her for the bread. <laughs> oh wow, that is uh, that is harsh. Um, do, 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 do. let's see if there's any questions. Well, well, here we go. Xavier says, Buddy has it in Canada, and it's pretty good, actually. I'm guessing he's talking about the, uh, the, uh, Type 97. Well, yeah, he could be talking about Type 97. He could be talking about milk in the bags and the ketchup mortar chips. Mortar or the ketchup chips. I mean, or they're all mortar, good. Yeah, right? yeah, they're maybe good. mortar I mean, and ketchup chips. I mean, I'll take it. Um, well, this is an interesting question. Uh, what are your thoughts on Airsoft Riot Shields and Juggernauts? Uh, Bob, I'd like to hear your thoughts first, if you don't mind. I, I think for riot shields, you, you're going to have to have some kind of rule built into it to, to balance it out. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it is mobile cover. And if you get one that's, you know, big enough, you're just hiding behind it the whole day. And oh, no yeah. one can, can shoot you unless they do some kind of fancy acrobatics, right? So if the game rules are, are set in a way to balance it out, same thing with Juggernaut play, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it, it, it adds another dimension to the game and, and it's fun. Like, I've seen Juggernauts where they have, like, balloons tied to them and yep. when you shoot out all the balloons, that's when they're they're dead. So, mm -hmm. you know, it just uh, it just depends on how the rules are set for it. Like, like with anything, it's more about how the idea is applied than, than the actual idea itself. That's actually a very good way to put it. And yeah, essentially, I, I feel very similarly in that, you know, it has to, some accommodation has to be taken into account to balance the gameplay. Um, you know, I've been at games where there are too many riot shields, and it just really screws things up. Um, but make yeah, a turtle formation. That's just... what the Imperials did. Uh, but, you know, that being said, there also, you know, there has to be some sort of limitation um, to balance it out. Like, you know, folks that are taking out you know, a polymer or a see-through riot shield and then one hand holding their rifle, it's completely unrealistic. Mm. For me, it would make sense if the riot shield's like, okay, you can bring it out and it can be, you know, it can stop bullets if it's if it weighs a lot. Yeah. Because yeah. those polymer riot shields, they're, they're, they're that's, nothing, you know? yeah, that's just for physical yeah. attacks. Um, so if you have a legit riot shield, it weighs a lot, then go by all means, go ahead and, and use it. And if you can carry one of those and use a pistol, go to town. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sure you'll be tired by the end of the day. Um, now, as far as juggernauts, I mean, I haven't really been out to many fields where they have a juggernaut out there and he, and he wasn't incorporated in the game rules. By, all, by definition, for me, if you have someone who, by, by the rules, can't get killed quickly, that's putting into the game. So as long as there's a specific rule set, it makes total sense to me. Like, I've seen, uh, I've seen other games where if you run up and tag the juggernaut... He's on your team and he shoots the enemy team. Oh, okay. So it's so, kind of a higher risk, high reward. Yeah, it's like sort of like hide and go seek with, yeah. with guns. So. I would say, you know, one thing that would be make sense for juggernauts would be like you, you really have to limit their, their vision and their, mm -hmm. their awareness, situational awareness. So that way it's more fair that he kind of has to tunnel vision you if he wants to kill you and give your teammates more of a chance. I think that would balance things out with how unstoppable they are. Mm. Actually, this might make a good uh, Juggernaut gun. This has just got high ammo capacity and ease to hold. So yeah, ju yeah. just saying. Just saying. Um, 
Um, okay. Uh, let's see. I see a camo rifle over Bob's left shoulder. What is it? Well, that's the MP5. Um, if it's that one, uh, it's an MP5 with a 3D printed front hand grip. If it's those two, uh, the one on the bottom is an LPEG, a low powered AEG. Uh, and the other one, I believe, is a 416 that has a okay paint job. Uh, <laughs> we, like Zero Dark 30. No, we tried to model that for Zero Dark 30, and the paint job just did, did not match what we were hoping for. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I play games when refs tell people with riot shields they have to lower the shields to shoot, makes it way more legit. Well, you know, that is another yeah, option rule, to do. Right? It. I mean, as long as rules can accommodate for it. Mm hmm. Okay. All right, we only got a few minutes left, so if you guys have any last questions, please throw them into the comments section. Are miracle barrels worth it, or is the right board good enough? My personal opinion is that I personally think, I said personal too many times, personal, personal. Um, I think the miracle barrels are worth every cent. Now, that being said, I would not switch out the barrel that comes stock on a Scorpion Evo to a miracle barrel just because I don't want to screw up anything on the compression or anything mm. internally because they've got everything working so flawlessly with each other. All the different components of the gun, I don't want to screw anything up. So on every single one of my guns at home, I have a miracle barrel. If I had a Scorpion Evo, I would keep it stock just so that I don't mess up that pretty awesome thing mm. that's great right out of the box. Uh, but yeah, overall, I think miracle barrels are completely worth it. I mean, some of the first few things I would always change on a gun if I wanted to was upgrade the barrel, you know, maybe upgrade the motor or the spring if I need to. So that's my opinion. What about you? I'll go with your diplomatic answer. That I Fair play. <laughs> I'll take it. Um, what's a good rifle for Faded Giant 5? Faded Giant, that's November, right? I think, is that the one that that's at the nuclear power plant? I think or the so, decommissioned yeah. plant? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's a mix of indoors and outdoors. The, um, Evo, the Evo would work. Yeah, I was just going to say, the, the Evo would be a good gun just because of CQB length, and it has an obscene amount of mm. range. Um, so, uh, ASG themed answer would be the Scorpion Evo. And if this was out by then, that would be a damn good option as well. Uh, but I don't know when Faded Giant is. You know what else is flawless? This live stream. Thanks, Chris yeah. Bennett. <laughs> Um, Nilsson Hell, your shout out is approved. Do, 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 do. Have you seen a high point carbine? Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. I didn't notice it was a high point until after I shot it, and I was like, man, what the heck is going on with this gun? And yeah, I noticed it was a high point. Those are supposed to be very fun to shoot. The thing is, like, it was fun. I just, I never um, had, I've never fired a gun where the stock was like, like it compressed. Like, yeah, that's yeah. right. It has the so strings in it. <laughs> it was it was just a little off putting at first. But you're right. I did have a lot of fun with it. But it's just it's weird. Like I look down at high points so much. So, but it was fun. But I wouldn't trust my life to a high no. point. I mean, would you? <laughs> yeah, that's a good enough answer. Okay. Um. Do, 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 do. Can I get a shout out? Yes. Will Skywalker Five Gaming. Your shout out is approved. All right. Harambe, your shout out <laughs> is approved. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. So many Harambe Ooh. shout out. Oh, my God. Where and when can I test my skills against you guys? Game Pod? Um, we should be having a zombie game coming up at Game Pod at the end of October. Uh, we, are, uh, we do have a game coming up, I believe, October 9th in Texas at D14 Airsoft. Um, someone was asking for a good gun for a first timer. Um, well, not to poop in your cereal, mm -hmm. uh, but, um, you know, you guys don't, correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't have a lot of, like, beginner-priced airsoft guns. We do have that one sear. Like, oh, that's right, the sear, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, it's weird, I don't normally hear people call it sear. I right, you should call sir. it that, the, yeah. yeah, sear, sir, yep. Though. Yeah, uh, well, the pricing of that is around 150 150 right? yep, 150 okay. Nine-month warranty comes with a battery and a charger. Oh, that's the one with the nine-month warranty. Yeah. Okay, so there's Action Sport Games uh, M4 Sear, uh, or Sir, as Sir. I would call it. Um, around $150. does come with battery and charger. Uh, there's also G&G Combat Machines. There's uh, our in-house in brand, the Airsoft GI G4. Uh, you should also check out what guns we have on special, uh, because sometimes you will get a stupid good deal. Like recently, we we don't have it right now, but we had uh, an Echo One. Uh, AMD 65, it's a Hungarian AK variant that normally went for 225 and it was a full metal AK with high capacity mag battery charger available for $89.99. So that was pretty ridiculous. So stay tuned to our specials, never know when it's going to happen. Um, I, I just had uh, just to show you this message from our mutual friend. <laughs> Don't ever dab again. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I always like mispronouncing his last name, mm. it's really fun. Will 
C. Yeah. Um, we'll see. Yes, that is actually what well, I was mentioning earlier, the Spooky Potatoes. The Elite Force KMP Basic is a really good starter, and that's usually one that we have on special for around $89.99, a full metal Elite Force M4. Um, are we going to fold a gap? Uh, I personally would not be able to make it out this year. Are you going to fold a gap in North Carolina? Not. Didn't we, think we won't so. be there this year, though. No. Yeah, what? Well, have you been there before? We were there last year. But oh, you not were? This year. Yeah, we're kind of we shuffle around the events we go to every year to try to you know hit the entire... Uh, I hear the game is fun. It, it is crazy. Although yeah. last year, to be honest, I was just at the booth the whole day yeah. and uh, talking to people about our guns. So I did not I did not get a chance to play, but from everything I've heard, it was a crazy game. I saw smoke uh, smoke grenades go off in the background. There were all sorts of vehicles running around, and, and uh, it, was a, it was a good game. Yeah, all the footage I see seems absolutely crazy, just a, just a mess of players and everyone yeah. shooting at each other. So, uh, All right, we actually went a little bit over time. Uh, what mag is that in front? Looks like a double drum. Yes, this is a C mag. This is pretty awesome. We're actually just talking about what a really fun CQB version of the CZ805 Bren would be, and pretty much drum mag uh, with maybe a vertical foregrip, mm -hmm. one point sling, and I don't know a gaggle, flashlights, and optics on this baby. Um, so check it out. Um, we since we are a little bit over time, I'm uh, just gonna re go over this stuff with mm -hmm. you guys. If you are at all looking for a new addition to your airsoft inventory, uh, check out the CZ805 Bren. There's four different models. They basically come in uh, black or tan, although this is more like kind of a gray, dark gray. gray Fifty shades of gray. Oh, gee. Shh, stop. Um, four different models, basically black or tan, or, you know, two-tone, um, as well as standard length and CQB length. They're currently on pre-order. They should be out before the, uh, before holiday. the holiday season. Yep. Yeah. Um, so take advantage of them if you know you want it. Make mm -hmm. sure you get on that pre-order so you're guaranteed to get one. Yep. Uh, also, just my own personal advice, check out the, the ASG Scorpion Evo. Check out the ASG P09 as well as the SP01 Shadow. Yeah. One, one big thing, too, about the Bren is the U.S. version will come with an AR magwell. So, uh, you know, you don't need to buy any kind of special mags for it. Although, we will be making available the Bren magwell and magazines for the people who want that extra dose of, I guess, uh, authenticity. Although, although I will say for the record that the Czech military has started using the AR Magwell, so take from that what you will. Just for compatibility with NATO partners exactly, and all that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that makes a lot of sense. So make sure to check out these guns. Also check out ASG on Facebook. They've got a lot of cool stuff coming out day after day. And also if you haven't tried your hands at a revolver and airsoft, ASG has a very wide selection. And also the first available one on the market that, what is it? Uh, Full metal, CO2 with hop up and field vehicle. Yeah, field legal and adjustable hop up are the most important things for mm -hmm. me. But the fact that CO2 means it's going to work in way colder weather than yep, normal. Yep. So check them out. And Bob Lee, thank you so much for coming Absolutely. back on the show for a double Bob, Bob Day. Day. What God is this? Listen. Part three? Part four? Uh, we're going to go part 79. All right. Yeah. All right, guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks for stopping in. Bye bye. Bye bye. Scene. <laughs>